Okay, so this is what Scrivener version 3 looks like. It's essentially the same in all the basic functionality, except you can see things have cleaned up a little bit across the top. If you were to compare these layouts side by side, you'd find things pretty much the same. Now, I want to show you how things have changed in version 3 when it comes to compiling, because boy have they changed. And it's going to take a little bit of sort of unthinking to be able to figure out how this works. The truth is, once you wrap your head around it, it's actually a lot simpler, but it's, it's a bit of a mind bender, or at least it was for me. And um, I figured what I'd do is I'd start off by showing you that what we have here is um, an untitled um, Scrivener document, which, as you can see, has been populated with some of the PLR content from this course. And I've created a two-part um, manuscript. I mean, I've called this thing draft, but we could call this anything we want. It doesn't really matter. This is ultimately what gets compiled into our ebook or our finished document. And these are the component parts. And as I've shown in other uh, lessons, you can move these things around. I'm not going to get into that here. What I do want to do, though, is jump into this. If you look over here, right where I'm pointing, this is the compile. Now, brace yourself, as they say. Here it goes. Watch this. When I click, you get an entirely different layout. Now, we're going to focus on um, compiling for a Kindle or an EPUB. It doesn't really matter. The whole idea is the same here. I'm going to pick Kindle. And what I want you to notice are the three panes. You've got formats, section layouts, and then something that looks slightly familiar. Okay, now I'm going to walk you through this in pieces. And I, I, might, um, I might break this up into chunks because there's quite a bit to cover. So uh, bear with me. So what we're going to do first and foremost is there's this new metaphor. Okay, over here on the right side, you see your manuscript represented. You can see part one of the various pieces of content, part two, the various pieces of content. And if you look to the right, there's this thing called section types where we've got headings and sections. Well, don't worry too much about that right now. I just need you to understand that in the new version three of Scrivener, what they've done is they've assigned this thing called section types to blocks of content. Okay, so you'll see I've created a folder and called it part one. And it has, by default, I didn't do this, it has uh, called it a heading section type. And, and then all the documents underneath are called sections. Now, let's scroll to the left a bit and click on the formats, because what we're trying to do is sort of generate and spit this thing out as um, an ebook. Now, we could just take the default, and if you look here, this is what I want you to pay attention to. Section layouts. See where it says heading? Look over here, heading. So what that means is the folder, which is currently assigned the section type of heading, is going to get this formatting because that's what the heading is. So you're going to see a break between, you know, a section break, section title, then you're going to see some text. If you look down here, you see something called section, and then it says main text formatting will be based on how the text appears in the editor. Ooh, I don't know if I want that, but as you see, all the individual document pieces or content pieces are called sections. So those are the things that they will inherit. Okay, now let's go over to the ebook and click on it. Notice how the section layouts has changed. It's now saying that no layouts from this format have been assigned. Well, that basically means it won't compile, like nothing has been assigned. So it doesn't know how to, how to render, how to compile, or how to spit out the various parts of our book unless you start picking them. So what you do is if you look over here, these are all like styles, if you will. This is, these are, remember this whole thing was written by coders. So the idea was that, you know, you, you could, um, pick these pre-assigned formatting blocks and assign them to your um, document or your manuscript. And then when you compile, it sort of spits things out. Similar to version two, but perhaps slightly simpler. So what we're going to do in the next video is I'm going to show you how to assign section layouts to these pieces here. And I'm also going to walk you through all these pieces across the top and then I'm going to show you where all of the things that in version 2 I walked you through that seem to have disappeared here, haven't they? Like, you can't see them anywhere. So, bear with me. We'll get to that in a sec.
Let's take a look at assigning the section layouts to the various parts of our manuscript. Now you re may recall that I picked ebook, and what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this button that says assign section layouts, and we click on it. And you'll notice that I've only got two section layout types in my uh, manuscript. Remember, let me close that so you can see it over here. I've only got headings and sections. If my document or my manuscript was more complicated, I could have more section types, okay? But right now I've only got two. So assign section layouts. This is something, by the way, you only have to do once. Once you've assigned these things and figured out how you want the various parts of your manuscript to be compiled, then, you know, problem solved. So look over here. So this is for heading. Now remember heading, let me cancel this again for you, heading was the, the part. Now I've created an ebook. This is a dummy ebook. With a, with a sort of a two parts and a bunch of chapters. I mean, honestly, this is really just a dummy ebook for, for testing and training purposes. But, you know, how we want to render part one is up to us. So we'll come into here and we'll say, I don't know, let's have a look. So do we, let's see if we can scroll all the way up. Do we want it to say section break, section title, and then some text? Do we want it to look like this? See, that's a table of contents bordered. Do we want it to look like this? Ah, this is interesting. Part numbering. So that's sort of making sense. Do we want it to break that way? Do we want it to say, you know, that and look like this? Here's the thing. I would advise that you actually try assigning different, uh, different section types, you know, different um, layouts to different section types, and then try rendering to see what it looks like. It's pretty powerful. Actually, it's incredibly powerful. And I, I think when you kind of wrap your head around it, blow your noodle. Um, let's take a look here. Let me pick one. I, let me just pick something. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to pick this one. I clicked. So now that is assigned to that. Now I'm going to click on section. And I'm going to scroll back up to the top. And I'm going to go, oh, let's see, section title, table of contents. And what do we want here? This isn't, uh, that looks pretty good. Section break. No, there's no section title there. It's just a number. Yeah, you know what? That's a chapter. Again, these are options. So I'm just going to pick that and I'm going to hit OK. Now, notice when we come back here that it's actually now assigned some section layout. So if you look at the heading, you'll see that the heading has been assigned this section layout. And if you look at sections, they've been assigned this section layout. It's gonna have chapter title or chapter number, and then it's gonna start the text. Now, it's probably not gonna have a title, but, you know, other than the actual chapter name. But I, you know, again, I'm, I'm just trying to point out that there's this power to take these section layouts and assign it. And then ultimately what you do is you compile, let's see, compile, let's throw it onto the desktop as a Kindle and away it goes. Yes, I know it needs to be updated. There you go, look how fast this was. Yes, sorry folks, let me just close all this. Yes, I accept the terms of use, there we go, bang. Notice how it's generated the, um, uh, you know, the table of contents. Here's part one. And here's part two, you know, we move through chapter one. See, I don't need that notebook, there we go. So that's the traditional Kindle, the way it looks. So notice how it's come together, chapter one. Of course we've lost titles, but that was just a setting option. And away it goes. All right, let me minimize this and close that. And that is how you compile using section layouts and this new thing here. So in the next video, I'm actually going to walk you through these options and I'm going to show you some more powerful stuff. This is really powerful, like mind-blowingly so. Anyway, that's enough for now. Okay, in the previous videos, I showed you how to take our uh, sort of dummy document, assign section layouts to the various parts of our manuscript and then compile it. But what I promised I'd take you through are these things across the top. So the first sort of bulleted list is in fact the various parts of the document. And as before, if you don't want to include things, you simply check and uncheck. That means it won't be included in the final output. All right. 
If you want to include front and back matter, which are essentially just areas of your book over here that you could create, then you check it and then you tell which folder or document you want to include. Easy as pie, same as version two. This little tabby thing up the top, that allows you to change the, you know, the, the metadata. Um, in this case, of course, this is an untitled document, which is not particularly inspiring, but that's it. You know, so this is where you could go down and actually key all this stuff in. And let's look at the gears. Gears allow you to um, ixnay all the old footnotes, remove them from your document, remove any comments, delete any ex you know struck through text. Remember, these are all options for compiling. So, if you're compiling for Kindle, you know there's certain things that you can and cannot include or shouldn't include. And these are all your options for you know switching things on, like downsizing and resampling your images, begin your book after the front matter. Um, you know, rather than having your front matter at the back end. Um, this, by the way, you know, when you, uh, in, in the other lesson elsewhere in this course that shows you how to uh, set up your Kindle Gen, this is where you click to reset the location or move it around on your computer if you had to. So that's changed a little in version three. These are your old replacements where, you know, you could have text and it will simply do a find and replace on the fly and compile that into your final document. This little icon, just like a picture, this is where you would uh, click and um, grab your front cover for your, you know, your Kindle ebook or any of your documents, uh, any of your ebook documents. I don't have one in this dummy document here, but if I did, I would have selected it here and it would be showing. And finally, the way it's going to render table of contents, it's going to generate an HTML table of contents, which you saw in the previous uh, video. Once I generated the document, you actually saw it created it. Um, and you know uh, you've got these these other markers like you can change the formatting you can change the titles of your table of contents and so on and so forth the thing I want you to wrap your head around here is the idea that they've gone with in version 3 of Scrivener uh, is that they've sort of um, deconstructed the document so that you can actually come back and you can look at the various parts, you know, the section types, if you will, and then pick the way that you want those to be assigned or, you know, compiled and then hit compile and out it comes. So again, it's, it's sort of like using styles in Microsoft Word or styles in pages on a Mac, same idea, uh, but at a sort of compilation level. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you something else. You notice this little pencil thingy here that allows you to change the way that this section layout is going to be applied or edited or created. Because I'm sure at this point you're going, well, this is great, James, but how do I create my own section layouts? Well, you can either create your own format or what you can do is you can select the one you want, collect, connect the, uh, click the gear down here, and you can go to town and create other uh, sorry, input formats uh, export formats or you can click on the plus so I'll show you that in the next video because I think you're going to find it quite uh, quite interesting to see where all of the options in version 2 went now if you've been through the the rest of this course or are familiar with version 2 formatting with Scrivener this new paradigm this new metaphor is a bit of a brain bender and there are lots of things that appear to be missing but they're not they just hide them from you because you generally don't need them at least once you've set these templates up or these formats. Now what we're going to do is I mentioned in the previous lecture that there's this thing called a pencil icon which allows you to actually edit the section layouts. Now that's not terribly helpful um, you know straight off the top so what we're going to do is we're actually going to look over here at ebook. I've got a right mouse click or you know, uh, option click on a Mac or whatever it is that on the computer and we're going to duplicate and edit this and the reason that you have to do that is if you notice me clicking on the pencil it said this or the format ebook cannot be edited because it's built into Scrivener so this is one of the built-in formats but that doesn't mean you can't create your own so we're going to do that we're going to click on ebook and we're going to go uh, right mouse click or control click or whatever to, to get this menu option up and then we're going to duplicate and edit the format so now what it does is it creates a copy called ebook copy which you could call anything you want now doesn't this look familiar this is pretty much the same formatting um, 
infrastructure that you are familiar with in version two. Okay, so I'm not going to belabor um, you know this too much, other than this is pretty straightforward stuff. See, this is where you change and set everything: the styles, the text layout, the cascading style sheets. Now this is new, so don't let that kind of you know freak you out. But this is where you can also um, edit the, uh, the the styles uh, the style sheets for your document. If you don't know what it does, leave it alone. The, the document title links where you can change these things, the HTML elements, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to walk you through them all because they're pretty much the same as they were in version two. But the idea is that you can go and create this however you want. Notice up the top here, you can format for either an EPUB or a Kindle, and then you can save it to either, you know, I typically save it to my format. So what we'll do is we'll just we'll call it ebook copy, we'll save it there. I'm not going to change anything, and then we're going to save. Look at this. So we've now got an entirely new section in formats. Scrivener formats, which is what was there, and then my formats. Now this sucker is mine, and I can go and play with it to my heart's content. I can edit the individual pieces, right? I can go to that piece, then I can go to that piece, and I can change everything. I can change the way it handles all of this. And again, this is assigned to the section, right? Watch, let me back out. See, section, heading, come in here, click on it, edit, assigned to heading, part number, layout name, understand? And then you get to change and tinker to your heart's content. You can play around with title options, new pages, page breaks, and so on and so forth. Like I said, extraordinarily powerful, but Ultimately, at the end of the day, what you do is you take your document and you assign section pieces to the various parts of your document and then you compile. And that, my friends, is how you compile in version 3. Now, elsewhere in the course, I've included a link um, to Literature and Latte's um, version 2 to version 3 downloadable PDF as well, which goes into it in, in further detail. Um, you know, my advice to you though is is just play with this um, and and assign the co the component parts to the documents and hit compile and, and see what you get because when you start to play with it, you're going to realize it's incredibly powerful. Anywho, I hope that that was um, at least a little helpful with respect to the way that version three is now compiling documents.